Welcome Spartans to Mission Debrief! We're playing every mission in the mainline Halo video game series in chronological order, discussing our experiences and sprinkling in a little lore along the way. If you'd like to play along and have your thoughts read on the show, email us at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at podcastevolved on Twitter. We'll be playing the Storm mission from Halo 3 on the next episode. This episode, we're debriefing the Savo Highway mission from Halo 3. I'm your host, Colin Perkins, alongside David Arnold. Hello, everybody. And Krista Brown. You say Tsavo, I say Tasevo. You would. <laughs> Last you would. mission. Crow's Nest. Last mission. Truth interrupted the UNSC strategy session in order to taunt his adversaries and order an attack on their bunker. The Covenant stormed the base from multiple entry points and forced the UNSC to evacuate. Chief saved everyone he could while the Marines rigged the facility with a bomb so they could make an explosive exit. This mission, Chief dusts himself off after another crash landing and immediately teams up with the surviving Marines in the UNSC bunker caves. The soldiers roll out on warthogs and carve through the Covenant resistance amidst the wreckage from the collapsed New Mombasa space elevator. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah. After outgunning or outrunning a slew of brute choppers and race, Chief receives orders to start the assault on the dig site at Voy. Date of the game is November 17th, 2552. Let's go. Let's get started. Let's dust ourselves off. So he's crash landed again. Like, we just went down the elevator, right? Yeah. And it, yeah. Like, every, and it the exploded. whole building. Yeah, the whole building was blown up. And Cortana said some rough. eerie things. Oh, yeah. This is going to be your grave, she says, I think. Tomb, I think. Tomb, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I do like the beginning of this this mission here because it, it it sets this little um, this sets the stage I guess for what's going on like you see everything burning and you know kind of as the slow fade in to to the the caves you know Marines are, are all you know injured and hurt and coughing and you're like wandering around for, trying to figure out what to do and then um, and then you see a sergeant. And he has a name, Gunnery Sergeant Reynolds. He's like ordering the Marines. It's like, all right, here we go. We got to mount up. Yeah, a- get the hell out of AKA here. Nathan Fillion. Is that him yeah, again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man, he's all over the place. Um, you do hear on the comms, um, it's Miranda, and she's telling uh, Chief to find transport and a rendezvous. I didn't pick up if, if, if it's specifically somewhere, but like you're supposed to hear static a lot of the times in the comms because of the you know the explosion and you're underground and all that sort of stuff. So the goal of this mission is really to, to rendezvous with the rest of your team who you helped escape. Um, that That's about all that happens, really. You just kind of drive and you shoot stuff. It's a lot of fun. We'll take you through it. Um, but but not a whole lot happens from a lore perspective. Krista, how do you like this mission? Is this one you look forward to? Is this one you kind of roll your eyes at when it when it comes? Or are you just, like, where are you at with this one? I started the mission and I'm like, I have no idea what this mission is. I totally forgot about this one. Oh, really? I was, yeah, and I was going through, because like, the first couple minutes, you're just literally just driving, and there's not much to do. And then the first big area with all the brutes and the shade turrets is when I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, it's this one. Yep. This yeah. one this... blends pretty well into the next mission, so I think that's where my confusion is, because I didn't... I knew what I knew what the big like main strokes of this mission are, the three main areas you get to. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't remember how it ends and like where it ends in conjunction to the next mission. So this one's a bit forgettable for me. I like I remember some of the big big vehicle battles and some of the big brute battles, but mm-hmm. other than that, this mission is just kind of oh, yeah, that happened. <laughs> On to the next one. The it's encounters are yeah, the encounters are memorable, I feel they like. They are, to, yeah. to your point, you're like, oh, I remember this part. And then you keep going, and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember this part, too. This is kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, like I said, like lore, lore-wise, not a, not a ton happens. This could this whole mission could have been done, like, in a, in a cool, badass cutscene. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, it doesn't. And it's one of the... It's, well, it is the first vehicle mission of Halo 3. So it's... it's Let's go. Let's get on the Warthog. David, what are your thoughts on the mission overall? I like it. I mean, it is when you kind of break it down, which I have never really done. Uh, it's super simple, but um, I kind of like it. I mean, there's no cutscene. 
There is, in fact, from a piece of trivia, there is no dialogue at all from John in this in this um, mission. Yeah. He doesn't speak. So they're literally getting from point A to point B and having fun along the way. And that's pretty much it. Um, I played this mission twice. I played it once just today, and I actually played it earlier in the last week with Oren getting some achievements. Nice. And there's a great one for this mission that is like um, getting four warthogs over the bridge. Oh, it's really? Like a, I think it's like four hogs in one gap or something like that. It has like a weird name. Um, so we had to do it on legendary. So it was really tough, um, but it was good fun trying to keep your warthogs alive mm-hmm. and get them to the bridge and then deploy some grab lifts and kind of ramp them over. It was pretty fun. It was, it was actually great fun. Thanks. Um, so that kind of helped this mission um, a good bit. Other than that, I love the set pieces and they're great. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll, we'll talk through them as, as we get to them, but uh, I actually really enjoy this mission. Nice. So, do you hop on the turret or do you drive right away, David? What do you do? Oh, I drive. You drive? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like the, the AI in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely took the wheel. Krista, do you take the wheel or do you? Yeah, the yeah. Thing? I feel like the. I always feel like because I had. This is back to reach, but I mean, whenever you got into the gunner seat of a warthog with an AI driver, they just drove you off a cliff. So I, n- I never <laughs> let AIs drive me around anymore. Uh, I did. A l- I switched back and forth a little bit, but yeah, we'll kind of we'll we'll get there when we talk through the mission. Why don't we do that? So let's get out of the caves. It's I do like how the sergeant rounds everybody up, and um, you act when you hop in the warthog. I feel like there's like there's kind of a little bit of a rah rah. Like the marines are like, yeah, let's go. Let's do yeah. this. Um, so that's cool. And then you drive through the caves a little ways, and it, it's a cool little drive, kind of darkened area, and then you see the light at the end. And then there's the door with a um, bunch of jackals and some maybe some grunts, I think, are there, um, right, at the, right at the front of the door. So you kind of clear those out however you want. You can drive past them if you want. Um, there is, there's a little kind of stairs and a little platform up on the side. You can go grab a shotgun if you want, but you don't have to. Um, but then, yeah, you you open up. Once you get out of the caves, you open up and you see these giant rings. They're all like this weird structure, and I had for- totally forgotten what it was. And I was starting to look it up, but then I then I drove around a little farther. You can actually kind of drove drive off to the right or left, excuse me, kind of up the hill and off to the left, and that's where you'll actually trigger some dialogue between some marines, and they'll say, "Hey, yeah, this was the the um, space elevator from New Mufasa." Yeah. yeah, which is so cool because cool. we just finished the ODST. We saw that thing fall, mm-hmm. and it's such an iconic structure in Halo Three. Like, a, I remember a lot of the trailers and stuff having these rings, uh, the from the space elevator in the background. Like one of the first yeah. trailers where Chief's walking, and then he sees like the flash of Cortana. I mean, the rings right behind him. So I think it's really cool because it kind of harkens back to you know just the Halo rings in general. Right. Yeah. Totally. Also, kind of interesting. No, the it stated the space elevator collapsed when the city was glassed, but we know it actually fell the day before, when um the subspace mm-hmm. when um, right. crew left. Well, glass records have bad planets. So. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> the um the space elevator. Is, yeah. This this the setting is cool. Do we did we see it in Halo Two? I'm completely forgetting. Was, uh, it yes, I believe was in it's a, in, in the somewhere. skyline, yeah. Yeah. It is, yeah. And so somewhere in the online, again, because we played ODST before Halo 3, where it would make complete, complete sense to us that, hey, yeah, that makes sense. This thing was giant, and it, and it fell all over the the um, the desert here. I mean, it's literally an elevator to space. It's, it's kind yeah. of big. <laughs> it's kind of big. <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, totally. All right, so let's drive through the wreckage of the space elevator, and um, we get get along. There's, there's like lots of little pockets, so you, you get out of the the caves and you kind of come up. You see the wreckage, and then you know there's there's lots of towers around the Covenant towers, and there's usually a, a brute and some jackals or something like that nearby. And you can you can kill them or not. You can just do decide what you want to do. Um, I think what I I was doing, I was kind of cruising. Um, cruising past some of it and then others I would I would I would actually sit down and you know kind of clear the area part of it had to do with whether or not I was driving too because if you're if you're not driving or if you're on the turret the marines will usually kind of circle around until you kill all of the covenant in the area did you guys find that at all or you guys probably you guys didn't let him drive so you probably didn't 
but yeah, but I've done it. I've done it in the past. They're, okay. they're generally like that. They they don't power through, for the most part. They always like circle, mm -hmm. and let you let you kill and fight. Yeah, which is fun. Which is cool. I mean, it gives you the, the turret's so much fun. Like my my controller was rattling this entire mission just from the, from using that turret. It feels so good. The sounds so good. It's just it's so it's just great to just destroy and burn through the covenant. It feels good. Um, yeah. Anything else from this kind of opening? stages you're just kind of going through the the hills here you do get to the point where there's like a little blockade um you kind of come up to an area there's you you kind of come up a hill and then there's like there's a phantom just sitting there just chilling and you kind of you come down and there are just you know pockets of covenant throughout there's a shade turret off in the distance there's the the phantom there hanging out there's like a the, the blockade of some sort it almost looks like a dam but it's not but yeah th that's kind of one of the first major encounters because at this point i was i was on the turret and the marine was just not doing a good job driving he would just kind of race into this into the middle and so everybody's plasma pistols were pointed at me and um i didn't last very long and of course i was stubborn and tried <laughs> and try to let him drive multiple times i think i ended up finally getting it after i don't know 15 minutes of dying because my my warthog one of the like got st kind of around one of the, the big rock in the middle and got stuck and so i was able to kind of pop out and then i don't know i had a little cover or something but what i what i ended up f figuring out i needed to do was i needed to take out the plasma turret on the phantom first and then, like, cause that thing's powerful. If it pelt, if it you know pelts you too many times, you're gonna you're gonna die pretty quick. So I did that first, and then um, looked at the shade turrets, and then there's also jackal snipers up there too. So this area actually has quite a few enemies. David, what did you? What was your approach in this little spot? Um, I like to kill everything. Okay. So when I can. Uh, I always go to the left and try and run over the two brutes. Uh, depending on your difficulty, you might get like a brute captain or major in here, um, mm -hmm. like a gold, uh, a gold brute. So it's well worth kind of mowing these guys down. And at that kind of big massive boulder does give you like great cover from like snipers and stuff, um, as well as the phantom, which will eventually just go away um, when you take out the turret. So you can just fly through this if you want to, just kind of go around to the left and go all the way up and around. You mm -hmm. can like very easily get past this. But I normally, I normally fight. Yeah. Chris, do you cruise or do you fight? I was planning on cruising and then my warthog flipped over. <laughs> uh, and then I, I got back. I got killed a couple guys and I got back in and drove away. But I have played it where I... Usually on co-op where you just kind of mount up the uh, warthog and drive around and kind of take everything out. Mm -hmm. Or get out a little bit and hop on a shade turret or something. Yeah. At one point, oh, you used to hop in the shade turret too? That's brilliant. Yeah, you can yeah. hop in the shade turrets. It, well, they die really easy, so you gotta be careful that it doesn't die before you get on it, but I th mm -hmm. you can hop on the shade turrets. I love the sound of those shade turrets. Yeah. Laser sounds. So uh, Reynolds pops in the comms here and is talking about trying to reach keys. But, um, let's see, his, his, it more or less says that it's just best to get a long ways away from the bunker. Just make some distance between the brutes and you. Um, yeah, and then so once you clear out this this area here, then you get to a couple buildings, and this area is pretty. I feel like again memorable spots. Like this is a memorable spot because this is where you start to see choppers show up, and then there's there's a semi truck oh, yeah. stuck in the middle like that you can use for cover. There's a shade turret up top there um, and then and then there's a cave that you need to drive through but there's the do you, is it a, just an energy shield is that what we're calling yeah, it? Yeah it's the barrier it's yeah, an energy, energy barrier. barrier so you can't drive your vehicles through that so this is a sticking point to a degree I guess you could just cruise up you can walk through the barrier but you can't take your vehicles through and somebody on the comms does pop up or maybe it's a marine that says you can't you can't do that um, but then you in order to get through that barrier you have to like go th walk through it and then you know, punch or shoot the little console that's that's holding it up. But yeah, this is this is this is a fun area. It's fun to see the choppers. And is this the first, first time we've cool. seen choppers? Yeah, probably. We yeah, saw yeah, the first vehicle, it? Right, but but this is a new thing in Halo Three. Yeah, are these so this trash is a vehicles? Vehicle. <laughs> they are trash. They're literally <laughs> made of trash. Yeah, that's very good. 
But uh, I think at some point during you know one of my deaths, one of my play playthroughs of this mission, I I did hop into a chopper just to, to cruise around, and they're fun. I think one of you mentioned that um, you actually do like to hop in the chopper because they have the long range, yeah. The the weapon on the front you can shoot from a long ways. So one one tactic would be to hop in a chopper and then just fire away at those shade turrets from a distance or, or kind of pick at the brutes that are right by the front door. Yeah, totally. Krista, what do you typically do here? In this, I tried this so spot? hard to get one of those choppers, but they both exploded on yeah, me. Yeah, they're kind of like, weak. Because ah. I, I love switching over to the vehicle where I can drive and shoot as soon as possible on missions like these. Yeah, that's true. So I was really frustrated, and so I jumped out of the warthog and kind of finished up uh, the level or just this this area on foot. I hopped up oh, to where did? the yeah I hopped up to where the shade turret was and pretty much just sniped everyone with the uh, battle rifle. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Do did the the drones come out for you right away? Then once you got up there, you have to go up to, you have to go up to the shield and kill one of the brutes. At least for me, that's how they spawned, and okay. they just kicked my ass the first time because I completely yeah. forgot about them, and I'm like, oh, those exist. When so. they're right in your face, they're tough. <laughs> Also, hilariously, once I killed all the drones and went through the shields, the uh, marines had gotten the warthog, and they just kept ramming the shield with the warthog while I was they in did. there. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of fun. God bless them. They missed like, you. Aw, they, they really did. want to hang out with me. They think I'm so cool. <laughs> the little bird ramming his head against the window. <laughs> it's like when, your dog, when you leave your dog outside, and he's like scratching at the, uh, the door to get in. Yeah. It's like, oh, I gotta let the little guy in. Do you grab a chopper here, David? No, actually, most of the time I warthog it, actually. I like to take the marines through me. I like to kind of build the convoy, if possible. Oh. Got all these kind of marines following you. Um, How so many can you can you get? Like, a whole bunch? There is about two or three warthogs. Well, actually, there's four, because the achievement is four. Oh, um, yeah. But myself and Oren managed to get five on the go at one stage. Um, they didn't all have marines in them, um, but like you can get loads, and like two or three of the of those um, warthogs, the ones with no weapons, so they're just transports. Mm -hmm. But like you can have some good, great fun here with like some war with, with, with warthogs. Obviously, the brutes are good, and their offensive capabilities are way better than warthogs. Um, yeah. But when I come to this section, um, on the harder difficulties, I do it on foot, because um, you just get destroyed if you try and drive in. It can be very difficult, so um, and most of the time you kind of got to clear the snipers. And there is a brute in here with like a fusion cannon, and he will wreck shop if you're not careful. Yeah, you got. I right. always got to take him out first. There, um, one of the comms guys is Sergeant Stacker, who we've mentioned before in the past. Um, I don't know if it was the right spot or not, but there's a gunnery sergeant Stacker here, so that's kind of his little marines are, are right around this area. And um, yeah, you you could clear out the area here. We we take down the barrier and then we we head on through the tunnel. Um, there is there's truth inside. And remember when we saw truth in Halo Two? He was preaching, you know, oh, the same the type hologram. of thing. The hologram, yeah, yeah. So truth, you can sit here and li there and listen to him if you want to, or you can just smash the hologram. We can drive by. Mm. Lots of options. But he does. He talks about... Um, I actually have his quote here. It says, The gods will not begrudge our excavation. By uncovering this relic, we pay homage to their glory. When the dust settles, we will all see what I already know. Here lies the path, the start of the great journey. Mm, that was cool. Mm, yeah. Good dialogue. But I mean, we, we kind of already know that. But he continues to kind of inundate his followers i guess all right so we get through the tunnel here and then we let's see here i think i have a minute note there's some more comms here that pop on oni recon 1 111 oh yeah you get through this this tunnel and that's where you see the cruiser up above mm -hmm. oh that's a great Fly little overhead. moment yeah, yeah that's cool yeah it's pretty cool um you can actually hop out of the warthog here and there's you can get the skull if you haven't done that already, if you didn't know that. So you'll jump off. So right when you get through the tunnel, you hop out, hop out of the warthog, and then you hop off to the left of the tunnel, or off of the bridge, 
and then you kind of go down and around. It's hard to explain exactly where it is, but you, you jump around the, the lower levels of this bridge, and you'll, you'll pick up the Tough Luck Skull, which is enemies dodge your fire and your grenades. And so then you just... carry the skull and you kill warthogs with only the skull. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what you do. But um, anyway, the the covenant, the cruiser that flies over top. That's just is that truce cruiser? No, it's not truce cruiser because he's in the dreadnought. No, it's just a cruiser. It's just a cruiser that's going closer yeah. to the dig site to yep. continue to help glass or, or dig. Yeah. For note, it has the marathon symbol on the hangar doors as it passes overhead. You can see it. If you're oh, looking. really? It's cool. Yeah. Marathon was cool. a bungee game before Halo. Mm-hmm. Yay, bungee. So is this the part where you're supposed to jump the warthogs over right here? You can, yes. Um, the marines will automatically jump out once you approach them, and they'll well, like the jump out of the vehicles. The achievement, the achievement is here, about. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's here. So it's just that first initial little jump, and then the next jump you have to get out of the warthog, right? There's like kind of like two back to back. That's sorry, th that that is the one I'm talking about. There is one that you have to get out. That is the one for the achievement. You can do one that you can actually kind of bash those barriers a little bit. It takes loads of time to get through. Or you oh. can just pop the grab lifts and kind of boost yourself over them. I see what you're saying. Okay. So then you can roll into this next area with a bunch of warthogs? Yep. That's what? amazing. That's super yep. amazing. <laughs> then you don't even have to do anything. You can just keep cruising. Well, the... um, Yeah, pretty much you could. You could just fly your way through. Yeah. This next area, there is, I don't know, it's not a, is there a little tunnel here? It's like a, kind of just a little structure, Overhang I guess. You drive through, yeah, kind of drive through this area, and then there's some marines that are kind of pinned down. There's a brute and a, and a grunt firing away at them, so you can save them. Usually a bubble shield pops up by, from the, the brute. But then, yeah, this is another, well, another one of those areas where like, oh, I remember this spot, because... Oh, yeah. Once you kind of head down to the left, there's a ton of brutes down there. Lots of grunts. And this is where kind of there's buildings in the back. And you kind of just have to hang out and clear out a couple different waves of brutes in order to get the pelicans to come and drop off your warthog. It's a pretty fun area, actually. I really enjoy it. They give you a lot of ordnance to yeah. work with. Yep. Yeah, you get lots loads of, of power weapons here. Mm -hmm. Lots of different weapons, and usually, um, well, there's a couple different p parts where the, one of the brutes has a fuel rod cannon, and that's just a pain. They just they will just pepper you until you die. Um, I think there's one or two that have have fuel rod cannons in this area, and, uh, and it might be in one of the one of the two of the waves. I think there's one that has it right away, and then the second wave comes, and there's another fuel rod cannon. But I, I think what the what I do here is I don't run up to that back bunker right away. I try to clear out some of the brutes that are down below and use their there's like these um, I don't know semi truck trailers and some big cylind like cement cylinders. So I kind of go in that area typically and will just kind of clear out as many as I can or at least as many as I want to before I or, or I go back to into, into the back area because that back area has a turret. And you can use that for a decent amount of time as long as you don't get targeted by that fuel rod cannon. David, what's your approach here? Um, typically, I run up on top of the um, the first kind of structure you walk through has like a walkway above it. You run up there, there's loads of weapons up there. So I normally go up there and grab the sniper rifle. I try mm. to snipe the crap out of people then. And then um, I love fighting my way through the middle, just going through the wave, just digging in. This is kind of my favorite. And then what I used to do, there's a crap ton of mines up in the room with the turret. I used to try and grab those, and there's like three or four yeah. of them. I tried to deploy them. They're, they never really do anything, but yeah, in my I head, I'm like, luck. yeah, I'm going to plant these mines down and try and get them before <laughs> the raid shows up and try and see if I can destroy the raid. But it's actually quite difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. um, anyway. Yeah, I, try, I tried to use those mines as well, but just... They wouldn't run over them, or I, I think you can yeah. end up, you end up shooting them too, and maybe that causes a little damage. It's not much better than a grenade. Actually, it's worse than a grenade. I'd rather just chuck something that explodes yeah. than Same. hope they walk over top of it. Chris, anything different from you? Uh, I usually take out the first wave and then move up to that upper area and grab the sniper. Oh, yeah, that's right, the sniper back there too. Yeah, yeah, I love that sniper. So mm -hmm. 
It doesn't have much ammo though. No, it doesn't. So usually, so like, the second wave, I pretty much ran out of sniper ammo, and then I grabbed one of the fuel rod cannons and just fuel rotted and then BR'd my way to victory. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely used that fuel rod in the wraith. So oh good. yeah. It, it dodges it though. If you're too far away, it will dodge. It'll kind of scoot side to side. But if you, so, you gotta you gotta kind of get in front of its face and just you know throw three or four fuel rod cannons right to its face and you take it out. Yeah, I just run directly at wraiths in this game, which isn't very yeah. good on heroic all the time. But I just yeah. run if I don't have a vehicle, I run straight at them with a fuel rod until they die. So you, I guess you could actually hijack the wraith here. You can't can do that this time. Yeah. So the I Halo... managed to actually. I don't know how I managed to do it, but uh, I was probably because of playing on normal. But with the turret, I managed to actually kill the driver. So I just kind of walked up and got oh, in. Oh really? It. So like, yeah. Yeah. But the. That's probably rare enough to do the halo 3 method is weird because once the wraith takes so much damage the driver will just die and then you oh, just take I the see. wraith so okay. instead of you kind of have to hit the wraith with gradual damage instead of hitting it with like a bunch of it like a fuel rod where it's a bunch of damage all at once mm -hmm. and you just do that until the driver pops out and then you just take the wraith it's not like in Halo Reach or something where you kind of can pop off the canopy and then snipe the guy out of the seat. He just kind of just falls out of the seat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He does, it looks like he's falling, right? He's just he's like, oh, I'm done. He just dies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the back. I mean, this whole encounter is a. It's a good encounter because there's so much cover. There's just so much stuff you can kind of hide behind, and then the, you have these jump pack brutes that just come. F like some of them will just kind of hop around, but every once in a while you get one that just flies all the way up to you. Um, it'll like use its. It'll burn its full fuel pa <laughs> fuel pack, uh, fuel out of the jet pack, and come all the way up, or like even jump o over the building sometimes too. But yeah, this this is a really well designed area. If you ask me, I like it a lot. I do too. This is definitely one of my highlights of this mission. It's just. They yeah, give you fun. so much to play with that every single time I play this, I kind of come from it, come at a different angle. And it's yeah, not it's great fun. It's not easy either. I mean, you if you oh, get no. a little lazy and just kind of like, oh, this would be fine, or like if you get too too far ahead, the brutes will overwhelm you. So you have you have to use the ordnance. You have to use the cover. You you have to be smart. The the nice thing about this is you can get overwhelmed really easy. So you have to be smart about this encounter. This isn't. Especially on like heroic and higher, this is an encounter that you kind of have to plan for, and you kind of have to know what's coming, and kind of act accordingly instead of just running and gunning. Yeah, exactly. I think I did miss it. There was some comms before we get to this area where Commander Keys hops on, and she says, um, "Finally, we've got a good connection. Truth's excavating uh, a for the Forerunner artifact, and we soon miss the Ark." So this is. So this dialogue, they didn't know, but I'm trying to think here, when we learned about the Ark. We learned about the Ark from Halo 2, right? The very end of Halo 2? Yeah. Yep, from 343, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then, so they know what the Ark is, and then apparently at this point is they're, they're maybe figuring out, oh, this must be the Ark that they're excavating. Don't, so they, don't they, in the debriefing, uh, in the debriefing in the last mission, don't they mention the Ark? Like, Truth I is trying they... to find something called the Ark that can fire yeah. all the Halos at once. Yeah, I thought they did too, but so anyway. I'm sure they must have figured that out at the end of Halo 2. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Sergeant Johnson, Johnson does pop on the comms too, and just says, keep pushing towards the town of Voy. And then he says, resupply birds, uh, we'll meet you at the next valley. So that's when, uh, once you finally clear out that wraith, that's when the pelicans come in and you get another warthog and some marine buddies to hop on. And I love the marines in this whole, there's tons of marines in this mission. Uh, they're just so upbeat and eager. <laughs> and they're, they're, they're just like, they just add, like you said, Chief doesn't say anything in this whole mission, but but the Marines are there to kind of cheer you on and, and rah rah. And, and if you die, they say, "Oh man, they got Chief. He's dead." It's just the, the dialogue's so good from the Marines. They just laugh at you and say, "What a loser!" <laughs> Do they? No, I they wish. might. That'd be fine. I would be surprised. All right, so let's let's hop on the Warthog if you don't already, or you could steal the Wraith, and then let's keep going. 
into this next area. You do um, you do kind of head up into a there's another tower up top, kind of at, at this valley. There's some more you know rocks and whatnot. And if you have a couple of marines with you, all the better. Um, there's kind of a turret, a couple turrets up at the top, and again you can clear this area out if you want, or you can just kind of cruise through. Nothing's, nothing's really stopping you. I don't think even on legendary, I think maybe the turrets will get you, but you can probably just cruise through unless it's this spot. But you will go through a little cave here up to the top and to the right, and then that's when you kind of come down and you see some choppers hanging out, and you must must have caught them off guard because they're, they're shooting at you or racing to get onto their choppers, but then you have another little stretch of highway here at the bottom. So you go down, and then this is another iconic area here is because this is where you start to just drive around this entire this there's like a hill in the middle that leads to a highway and there's a wraith on top and then there's a bunch of jackal or a, a bunch of brutes brute choppers driving around and then there's a phantom that comes in and drops another wraith i think there's three race in this area it's it's good fun unless it's probably more fun actually on co-op <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It's not the best when you're playing solo and you're trying to decide, should I drive? Should I get a chopper? Should I be on the turret? Because most of the time, um, when I was doing when I was doing this playthrough, I let the the um, marine drive, and he did not do a very good job. <laughs> Zero <laughs> he just out kind of ten. Of went to the next, like to the other side of the hill where the the phantom comes in, and then there's a shade turret up on the top, and the phantom, and they're just all pelting you, and then there's some choppers. Yeah, it, it didn't go very well. There are no good Uber drivers in the Halo universe. <laughs> They're all awful. <laughs> yeah. So I think what I ended up doing is just kind of cl- I ended up getting out of the Warthog altogether, climbing on the side of the hill, the the one that you can see when you come into this area, and just hijacked a wraith. That's what I ended up doing. What? No, uh, we're not. Yeah, I mean, David, what are you? I had my wraith with me, so like I just powered through this whole area and had hell of fun blowing up um, choppers with, with the wraith. Oh, because you picked up the wraith at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Cool. It was good fun. Yeah, and so if you have that power vehicle, this area comes becomes a lot easier because you can fire and drive at the same time. Hooray! As Krista mentioned, yeah, it's the best. Krista, what do you do? Uh, I grabbed a chopper pretty much as soon as I possibly could, took out a bunch of the choppers in the first turret you say see, and then I grabbed the wraith and kind of just swept up the rest of it. Yeah. Nice. The Sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll, when I was letting my my marine drive, I, I you know, I, I was, sometimes I just get determined. It's like, okay, this is how I'm going to beat this level. <laughs> the marine, yeah. he's going to drive, and I'm going to be the turret, and I'm going to get it right this time. Usually it takes way too long for that to actually happen. So, so um, I think the first time I did this mission, I got frustrated. I just took the wheel and just drove up the hill past the the wraith and just went, just went for it. And you, and you could do that. I, I'm on heroic and I was still able to kind of get away. But then I just decided to drive all the way to the end of the mission, or just kind of sprint to the end of the mission. And then that's where you do get overwhelmed because then there's some brutes behind you and you get you get shot. What, what was actually unfortunate from this is I ended up kind of you. So you 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 pass this area, you go down the highway, and then there's like a, a blockade or there's a bunch of brutes in the middle with the tower with yeah some some, uh, some blockage. I fell off the side of the, <laughs> of the <laughs> highway, but I survived. And then I got a checkpoint. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> so I was, like, hanging on the side of this rock, trying to figure out, okay, do, can I step here? Nope. I'm dying there. Okay, I'm going to jump over here, and then I'm going to slide down this hill a little bit, and then I'm going to get caught. And then now what do I do? <laughs> so every oh. time I died, I would just be right back on the side of this hill. And the checkpoint is a hard checkpoint, so there's like, oh, I have to start the entire mission over. Oh, that's just oh Halo Hell right there. Yeah, that got super frustrating. Luckily, this game, I, don't, I, don't, I forget if Halo 3, the proper game, has it. But uh, Master rally Chief Collection points. has the rally points, yeah. Yeah, the proper game did too. Okay. This was the first game that did it. Nice. So there's an Alpha and a Bravo, and the Bravo rally point was not too far back. 
So it was actually, I think it was, oh, the Bravo Rally Point was right before you get to the, the area we just talked about with all the brutes and where the Phantom comes and, and um, kind of where you're holed up in the bunker area. So that's that's the Bravo Point. So it's not too bad. I think I just ended up cruising past it. <laughs> but that, yeah, that was not fun. Yeah, that actually reminds me of something I used to do with my friends when we co-opt this mission because one of the... Um, one of the areas has like a piece of highway that's cut off and then has barriers in front of it. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, that piece of highway, like if you kill your friend and you stand right at the edge, they'll just spawn off of the edge indefinitely. Oh, really? <laughs> so we would fight each other and then whoever won just got to watch the other one die forever. Die it was constantly. Great. That's what friendship's that's, all about. <laughs> that's true. That, that really sounds is. like co-op with Krista. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Alrighty, so let's head down to the last little area. Like I said, there's those brutes in the middle. Depending on what you have, if you have a wraith, you can just kind of pepper them and take them take them out right away. If you don't have yep. a vehicle at this point, then you do have to take your time because there is a lot of them, and they will overwhelm you. Um, I would definitely recommend having a vehicle at this point because there is, there, it's a, there's a highway, too, that you have to deal with and kind of get down to that spot. But then, um, then you were pretty much done, so you kind of clear out that area up top, and then you... You head down, you, there's a slope that you head down, there's a crash pelican like we always see, and then there's a turret in the back, and just a lot of brutes in this area. There's a chieftain yeah. brute with a turret, and um, it's pretty much mostly brutes. I don't, I don't even all know if there's brutes, another yeah. jackal or anything. Like, yeah, I think it's all brutes. No, it's there. all brutes, yeah. yeah. What's your approach, David, here? There is a sniper a vehicle, rifle here. Can you? you you can. You can bash through the barrier and get yourself through. It's oh, totally possible. It okay. just takes time. Um, you can do that. Or, I, again, there is a like a like there is a lot of weapons right before you go there. There's like a couple of dropped human weapons are there. There's a BR. There's a sniper. Um, so, typically, I use a lot of grenades here. And I try and pick them off one at a time. It's very tough on higher difficulties because there's just so much brutes in one, in one space. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I fight my way down to the pelican and normally fight my way through the middle it's kind of typically how I do it I mean there's a turret there you need to take out as well uh, I got some lucky grenade shots off this today also I'm playing on normal so it wasn't too bad yeah the brutes will it depends on the kind of the encounter but the brutes they will come up and kind of even get even flank you or get behind you so it does make it a little more challenging Krista what's your approach here so I had so I still had my wraith, so I went up to the barriers and all of the brutes just came up to the barriers. So I murdered them with the wraith and then sniped as many as I could and I had no problem <laughs> scooching those barriers out of the way with the wraith. So I just Oh, you just pushed them, okay. Yeah, I just pushed them pushed them aside and I just murdered like I didn't even think of this area as like difficult cuz I had the wraith. I just they just all died basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Yeah, and then yeah, so the so you took the wraith all the way to the barrier, like all the way down to the where the mission ends. Yeah. Yeah, nice. That, <laughs> that makes it way easy. <laughs> it was it was really easy. It was ridiculously easy. Right. It's yeah, also very that... satisfying because you see all the like the brutes bodies like fly away and stuff. Yeah. One of the brutes in the area before you get to the end here does have a beam rifle, so if you want to pick that up, and you can pick a bunch of pick a bunch of them off before you get down there but this is one of those missions where if you don't have the right stuff like a wraith like a, having a wraith at this point makes it super easy but if you don't have that or if you're not taking your time this mission does get a little bit more difficult but if you're just smart about what you're doing you shouldn't have too much too much problems but that's really it right so yeah <laughs> once you clear out all the brutes here you i don't i think you have to smash the barrier also uh then... yeah i think so just yeah. to open the so, tunnel. Yeah, what I, I at one point what I did was I think what the way I ended the mission once I, I finally got you know remember I had to restart the mission or at least start a problem point. I went into the tunnel, smashed the barrier just to see what would happen, but but that didn't end the mission. I, I ended up having to clear out the chieftain that was still hanging out there. But then yeah, then that's it. So then you do I, I do love Hood's voice, right? Yeah. Like he pops on here and he talks about how um, now when we were in the bunker they were talking about okay here's the plan right so then you get out here and you regroup with the marines and hood and, and keys and they say okay now we're going to execute that plan we were talking about. right yep i think that's I think that's about right but that's it 
like I said, this could be this could have been just a kick thing? ass. It's time to do the thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this could have been a kick ass cut, cut scene. Um, it's fun. It's still fun. I enjoy enjoy playing. I'm glad they they made this level. There are some iconic iconic encounters that we talked about, but there's not a whole lot of substance like lore wise. It's, it's just it's a point A to point B. Hop in a bunch of vehicles. Have some fun shooting guys. It's a good mission from that standpoint, but um, just a little bit of dialogue here and there. Not doesn't add a ton to the overall story. It definitely um, ups the difficulty level from the last two missions, which kind of gets you ready for uh, some of the other more difficult parts of the game. Yeah, like this That's is definitely the first difficulty spike that we see. Yeah, it's almost like a training you on vehicles because we're going to be using vehicles later in the game. It's like, okay, here's now you can drive. You know, you can do good chopper. You can use your warthog. You can get into a wraith. Let's practice. Let's have some fun because you're going to need those later in the game. Or even just giving you a huge area with multiple waves of enemies to work with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Cool. Anything else to add, David? Um, just a small bits and pieces, really, that I said, in case you're wondering. Savo is a region of Kenya close to where the Savo and Athai rivers meet, and there was a place where the Uganda Railway passed over the Tsao River. The bridge will not be encountered as it is on the underside of Voi. So these are all real-world locations. That's cool. With um, real-world geography. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the only level where Thel Badam is never seen in single-player campaign. Yeah. Um, this is probably because he's in the bungee cannon. He has been evacuated from Crow's Nest via the landing pad Bravo when the brutes disarm the bomb. Yep. So he actually gets up and leaves, and that's kind of... He, you don't see him again. Um, it's the first level where you get the rates and, and brute chapters, like we said. Mm-hmm. And it's the only level in Halo 3 where John has no dialogue, which I mentioned earlier. I don't think there isn't really anything else really of note that I haven't already said. So, cool. Like I said, short mission. All right, well, I asked a community question on both Facebook and Discord, so why don't we do that quick, and then we'll get out of here. We'll move on to the storm. Woo. Krista, do you have Discord open? I do. Let's do it. So, Colin Perkins asked the discord how much effort do you put into protecting slash saving marines during the campaign question for mission debrief dash halo 3 colon savo highway end parentheses (laughs) (laughs) you guys are dicks you know that right (laughs) (laughs) that's our job um master g 97 says uh not much. Only the ODST survive on my team. Are there ODSTs in there? I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I think he's just saying that, like ODSTs in terms of game ODST. Because I think it's all Marines here, but I yeah. didn't look at the character models. But as far as I'm aware, I think it's only Marines. Yeah, it's only Marines. There's no drop pads or anything. And then Ian says... uh more now than I used to, I get a strong attachment to my men now and feel obligated to protect them for the Big Bad Covenant and the woman, men and woman, woman and men, humans. <laughs> I'm attached to my humans. So thank you for not being horribly sexist. Thanks. <laughs> um, Elson94 says, I remember trying more during the Sierra 117 mission. But I can't uh, protect them as much if they accidentally run me over with a vehicle or throw a grenade on a wall that kills me. Uh, yeah. Or they run each other over, too. That's the thing. They do that a lot, yeah. I saw that. They just murder. I actually, uh, I'm, I'm getting off topic, but I accidentally created a suicide bomber in one of the parts of this mission where I threw a what? spike grenade on him and then he just ran towards the covenant. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm oh, like, nice. oh, oops. <laughs> well, that happened. So that was fun. Uh, Redacted Seventeen says uh, barely any. They're only of use to. Their only use to me is to man the warthog turret and drive. So he just uses them uses them as expendable pawns. Unlike me, who yeah. puts nice grenades on them and sends them to their doom. <laughs> and then uh, Min Max Speech says. Uh, Generally, I keep an eye out if I can, but if there's more than three to four, then I make no effort because I'm going to. Sl- they're going to slow me down too much. Mm. I can. I can relate. <laughs> it's heartless. And that is. I know. We're we're evil, evil people. And that's all I have from Discord. 
Very nice. David. Facebook. Yes. We get a lot of responses on Facebook. Yeah, there are. Hot There's topic. A few in there. Hot topic. So Colin Perkins, nine hours ago, as of recording, <laughs> how much effort do you put into protecting slash saving Marines during the campaign? Question mark. Open parentheses. Question for mission debriefs. Dash Halo three. Dash Zabo Highway. Close parentheses. <laughs> He has a nice picture there of some marines. It's a pretty good picture, actually. Um, a ben McPhee says, I once, resta- I once restarted until I saved them all. I may have lost one or two, but made a huge effort to keep my life. That's pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Dedication. Uh, dedication. I say way too much. Generally, I do put in a good bit of effort saving marines. I love to outfit them with um, power weapons and watch the carnage happen. Um, they're pretty, but like, you know, the marine AI is it's not it's great. Do you know what I mean? They will. Friendly fire is on uh, when you're using marines. Uh, James Whitemarsh says, I've always saved my marines. It's not the same writing in a warhog without them. I agree. Um, their dialogue always makes it worthwhile, I think. Um, Jeremy S. Earl says, I'm more of a detriment to their survival than the Covenant usually. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jesse says, depends on the difficulty. If it's legendary, absolutely zero because it's pointless. I agree. Ian says, I actively killed them. <laughs> Yikes, Ian. He shoots them for ammo. A lot of people do that. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, I tried to find protect them as much as I can, says John Wren. I see a brute and they're ragged all across the map. Yeah, that's true. The brutes just smash through marines. Um, Justin says... Marines are secondary for me. I'm always looking for the next Covenant Flood victim and then get pissed off as there's nobody to let rip on the Warhog chain gun. I know. It's pretty yeah. bummer when you need these guys. It's true. Um, Lance says, I keep as many of them alive so one can catch the plasma spike grenade meant for me. <laughs> so <Sorry. laughs> it's a human barrier. And uh, George says, I try to protect them. Uh, the entire time I really get sad when they die. Single player Halo was totally lonely experience without them. I'm always bummed when they die. It's okay, uh-huh. George. Spencer says if a marine dies on normal, I'll revert checkpoints to save them. Those people I really treat like family, no one gets left behind. Fair play. Wow, that's good. Yeah. David Elwood says I give the marines engraved mine beam rifles and do my best to keep them alive. Um I do that too. James Goodsell says, I think they're I think it's a mechanic that's missing from four and five and they're suffering because of it. Working on the other Spartans isn't as fun as there's no feeling that you're their hero and I need your help. And the mining security personnel from 5 are horrendously unlikable. I understand what he means. Um, David Albert says, In Halo 3, I gave an elite a hammer. <laughs> Doesn't do anything with it. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> nice. A lot of people it, really hold, yeah. hold their marines dear. Man, really I'm super it. heartless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I just, yeah, I just are, go through the mission like normal. I kind of I mean, do too. I've I've changed tactics depending on what the difficulties I'm on and generally kind of what, what moon I'm in. Um, but typically I always try and outfit them with heavy weapons. Uh, I think that's cool. I just they're way more effective and it feels like you know you have some kind of a squad when you go in. And I, I like to see them use the weapons, different weapons and stuff. It's effective um, until they blow you up with a rocket launcher. Yeah, that's like it's a risk reward, Chris. <laughs> you know, you just gotta kind of roll with it. Uh, but if I don't give them a the rocket bad. launcher, I have a 0% chance of getting killed by a rocket launcher. You think that, Krista, but you'll probably kill yourself with a rocket launcher. <laughs> That's why I don't pick them <laughs> up. No, you will. That's why I use you snipers. You'll probably shoot a marine too close. Um, it's pretty... I, I like the... It is a missing mechanic. I, I understand what he means. It's kind of an interesting point. Uh, obviously, they're great for manning vehicles and stuff like that. And I think I like their little bits of dialogue. Yeah. They're all, they've always been fun and well-voiced. Absolutely. And with the AI, it's a little bit wonky. All right. Did we do it? We did it. I think we did it. Moving on. Moving on. We're getting there. All right. That will do it for a debriefing of Savo Highway Mission from Halo 3. On the next episode, we'll be covering the storm. Send us your thoughts at podcastevolved at gmail.com or drop us a tweet at podcastevolved on Twitter. Until next time, evolve. 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 I didn't like my evolved. Hold on. Evolved. <laughs>